So yeah, basically your first step will be to drop the basket all the way down onto any type of block or 2x4 support that will give it a few inches of clearance on your back end so that you can access your pulley, the shoulder bolt, and the nut fixing the pulley in place. So you have to open your slide tray to gain access to said pulley. Nine sixteenths socket for the nut and a five thirty seconds Allen into the shoulder bolt. To loosen that off. Back your winch off one or two rounds to make sure you don't have extra pressure on the cable. Loosen that off should be able to remove your pulley. If you're able to, put your hand underneath to catch the washers. Push your slide tray back in and remove all eight 9 16 bolts from holding the slide tray down to the basket. And from the brackets. Next, you remove the slide tray. When removing the slide tray, be mindful that the brackets and slide can open on you. And so you're going to want to use the back lip as your carrying ledge. By that, I mean use it as a handle. That way nothing can slide out and injure you. And then gently set it to the side. Next step is to disconnect the termination point of your cable using the same 916 socket. Be careful to catch the thread protector that's inside the cable thimble. Following that, you disconnect the two three-quarter inch deep bolts that are connecting the top left side of your back bracket. Then you move around to the front and disconnect the bolt holding your front support bracket in place on the top right side if you're facing it from this angle. Gently swing it so that it is not in the way and leave it like that. disconnect the two three-quarter inch deep 916 bolts holding your mid-back channel in place on the left side. Uh, 
At this point, the only bolts that are now holding this side of the unit in place are in the bottom corners of both of these front and back left side corners. So before we remove those, we need to remove the wooden block and allow the basket to sit at its lowest point so that it doesn't tumble when we take the side out. When you are here. Cool. cool. So the last part of our removal procedure here is to disconnect the six remaining bolts holding our side in place. Three in the front corner, three in the back corner, and two hidden ones behind the wheel on each side. If there's a total of ten bolts, six vis or sorry, yeah, ten bolts, six visible for not. You see it all right there? Yep. All right, we'll start with our one inch bolts behind the caster. On to the three quarter inch bolts in the corner. to the back corner. Same procedure, same number of bolts. At this point, as you disconnect them, they are the remaining bolts holding this side in place, so just be mindful it does not tumble or fall. I would highly recommend having an assistant hold that side. Do you mind, Kyle? Thank you, sir. Again, do not forget there are two bolts behind your caster that are not easily visible, along with your three bolts holding your corner in place. There we go. The side is now disconnected and can be removed with two people provided that you make sure it does not interfere with the remaining brackets. Make sure when removing the side that the two ledges that form over your brace here are removed from the back middle brace to keep it from sticking, as well as the overhanging lip from your top middle brace. Following that, Two people should be able to gently lift there we go. gently lift that side out and lay it against a wall or even surface so it does not fall. Okay, the next step is to gently lift your basket out using the cutout holes in the side. And gently moving away from the guide rails and over. Okay. The next step is to remove all of your carriage fixtures off both sides of the lift carriage. One of which is a 9 16th bolt with a 9 16th nut. The other is your 5 30 seconds Allen with a 5 8 nut.
one inch bolt and our nut both have a 9 16 size. When you do remove these, the entire bracket is going to come off with it. Just be mindful that you do not lose your brackets during the removal process. So, to re-begin our mounting process, take one of our mounting, or one of our support brackets with the cutout shaped so it will fit around this back brace. Slide it into location. When replacing your cam follower and your one inch bolt, the pre-drilled holes will only accommodate the appropriate mechanism, meaning your cam follower is only going to fit in one of the two holes side by side for each location. That's how you determine which one receives the cam follower. Second brace on here. Put on one of the 7 16 washer over each the one inch bolt and the cam follower, followed by your H bracket with the nylon roller facing the outside of the basket. Once in place, position another 7 16 washer over each the one inch bolt and the cam follower. Following that, reattach your 9 16 nut to the one inch bolt and your 5 8 nut to the cam follower. Leave that in place until you get your second H bracket into the bottom. I'm going to follow the same procedure, and as explained, the cam follower only fits in the appropriate hole. Get back into the lift is to put on our caster locks so that the unit doesn't scoot away from us when placing the basket back inside. Kyle, my good sir. At this point, you're going to use the handles that are cut out in the side of your basket. Gently lift it. Come over to your unit. And the person carrying on the side with a still an attached side has to go out and around. Tuck the cam followers in both sides against the guide rail to make sure it's lined up correctly and the side of your basket should sit almost flush with your guide rails. Gently lower it down to its lowest location. Oh, can you pull that cable back out please? Gently lower down to its lowest location. Once it's in the lowest location, Gently push it as far over against the guide rails as you can to allow for the maximum amount of space to fit your side back into the unit. So again, using two individuals, gently lift your side brace, bring it over to beside your unit and set it down. Get a, get a strong grip on it, and you're going to gently lift it in, once again, watching your back middle brace and your top middle brace, so they do not catch and prevent you from installing into your unit.
you're going to be aiming to insert the guide rails down in between each of your cam followers. Once in place, you'll need to give it a little jiggle to make sure it nests itself into the lowest location. Okay. Once your sides are in, you want to make sure that your back middle channel relocks itself over the brace lip and that your top left is sitting on top of your left side. So now that we have our left side inserted back into the unit, we're going to be going through and re-threading all of our bottom bolts into the bottom corners, which will be three of our three quarter inch long bolts into the outside corners and two one inch bolts in behind where the caster is in a non-visible area. Once we have them in location and hand threaded in part way, we're going to tighten them in with a torque wrench set at 23 foot pounds. If for some reason your holes do not line up exactly, you may need to tighten a bolt either on the front or side in order to pull your other threads into alignment, which is what I will do right now. Like so, 23 foot pounds. Swing your front bracket back into place. Gently push your vertical support outwards to line up with the hole. And thread a three quarter inch bolt with a 9 16 head. With a split lock washer and a 3 8 inner diameter washer as well, which would be with it when you remove it. We're going to hand thread them in place with the split lock washer on the outside, our flat locker, flat washer on the inside. Again, using our torque gun, we're going to tighten this all the way down. Okay. 
inside the back left corner and hold it in place so that you can thread your bolt in with a split lock washer. You're going to hand thread your bolt in making sure that the thread protector stays in between the thimble and the threads. So the first thing you want to do is make sure your cable is aligned correctly and pull the excess loop down through your pulley channel. Following that, we're going to place our shoulder bolt in our slotted hole in our hole, followed by the half inch flat washer, our pulley. Once we have that in place, we're going to gently pull the excess slack of the cable out of the way, pull our shoulder bolt just back outside our, oops, just back outside our hole and place our remaining half inch flat washer around our shoulder bolts. Gently wiggle it to make sure it's threaded and seated all the way in. Followed by placing our remaining flat washer, 7 16 over the threads of our shoulder bolts, followed by the 9 16 nut, and hand tighten. Here we're going to use our Allen 5 30 seconds with our 9 16 socket and we're going to tighten this assembly back down to 23 foot pounds. Okay, once we have our cable assembly reattached, we want to neatly coil and reapply a very light amount of pressure onto our cabling system to keep it neat. Okay. Install our slide tray. Again, when lifting, be sure to use your back ledge as a lifting handle to prevent the slides from opening and causing injury. Gently place your slide in between your L brackets and gently slide back to your unit. 